everyone. Welcome back to day two of our 2016 Fiber Flux Holiday Crochet Along. We are in the midst of making the Merry Little Throw. This is a join-as-you-go granny hexagon blanket. So I'm very excited to be doing this crochet along with you. It's going to be really beautiful. I went ahead and grabbed one each of the colors of the yarn that we talked about in day one, the day one video. We're using Lion Brand's Wool Ease Thick and Quick. Just a uh, very special thanks to them for providing this yarn. And I have uh, the Cranberry, the Grass, and the Fisherman. Obviously, you can pick any colors you like. And I also had some of you ask about uh, buying the yarn. Buying yarn for a blanket is no joke. You know, you have to buy lots of yarn for a blanket. So because this is a join as you go blanket, you can also buy as you go. So if you if you want to use, um, you know, just buy a couple balls of yarn to get started and then make a little bit and then, you know, maybe head out to the yarn shop again in, in a week or two or a couple weeks, definitely feel free to do that. It's your project. Definitely go at your own pace. Okay, so today for this part, for day two, we're going to be making the basic granny hexagon. And it's really easy to make. We're gonna do one uh, color per round and I'm gonna show you how to switch colors and work all the rounds, okay? So to begin, I just went ahead and grabbed uh, some of this cranberry to get started. So we're going to put a slip knot on our hook to begin our granny hexagon. So what we wanna do is wrap the yarn around your fingers, bring the yarn behind that loop that you just made, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. Next, we're going to make a ring that we will be working all of our stitches into the center of. So what we wanna do is chain four. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. Then we need to join to create the ring that we can work our stitches into. So this chain farthest from the hook, we're going to work a slip stitch. So insert the hook into the chain and bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook and you now have the ring that you'll be working your stitches into. I also wanna point out there is a tail here. We're gonna hold that along the edge as we work and that will weave it in as we go along and it'll save you a step at the end. When you're working with lots of motifs, you definitely wanna to try to weave your ends in as you go along because it'll save you a ton of work at the end. Okay, so let's start round one next. Okay, I'm making both the ring here and round one in red, so I don't need to switch colors at this point, but after we work this uh, round we're about to do, we'll switch colors. Okay, so for round one, we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now this is gonna count as a double crochet chain one because we're gonna be doing that around the edge as well. Okay, so next we're going to work a double crochet into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the center of the ring and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. That's the double crochet stitch. This is the stitch we'll pretty much be doing for the entire blanket. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit more yarn here. Okay, so then we're going to chain one. We're gonna put a chain in between each one of these double crochets, okay? So we have our beginning chain and we just did a double crochet. So we're just gonna do this double crochet chain one 10 more times, okay? And that will give us a total of 12 wheel spokes because we have this chain and the one that we already did, okay? So double crochet, chain one, 10 more times. So one, chain one, and then two, double crochet, chain one, three, double crochet, chain one, four, double crochet, chain one, still holding that tail along the edge as we work. And then I also wanted to point out that um, we're putting a lot of stitches into the center. So if you need to, what I just did, I just kind of pushed everything over to make a little bit of space on that as well. Okay, I'm making the fifth double crochet, chain one, remember to put a chain in between each one of those, and six, and then a chain one, seven double crochets, 
chain one, we get a little bit more yarn. Eight, double crochet, chain one, the ninth double crochet, chain one, and 10, okay? And then chain one, okay. So round one is complete. We just need to join where we began, okay? So we still have that tail there, and I'm gonna show you what to do with that in just a moment. So go ahead and count one, two, three chains up, and then we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round. So insert the hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. So round one is complete, and that's very quick, isn't it? Okay, so what we're gonna do is switch colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the yarn, and you don't need, you don't need much yarn. We're gonna be weaving this end in as we go along as well. And then just wrap that tail around your hook to fasten off. Just bring it through just like that, and then pull to tighten. Now, I also like to um, trim the ends as I go too. That'll save you a little bit of work at the end. So see this tail we wove in as we went along? Go ahead and give that a nice, firm tug and trim with your scissors. And then you can save these clippings for other things down the road if you need to stuff, uh, um, you know, if you make stuffed animals or amigurumi or some little you know, throw pillows or something like that. I always save my yarn clippings. Okay, so round one is complete. Next, we're going to begin round two in a different color. Okay, so for round two, um, I went ahead and grabbed this grass, the green colorway. Now, in between these spaces are, is where we're gonna work, these chain one spaces. Remember we put a chain in between each one of these double crochets? We're gonna work in those spaces for this round. Okay, so we're gonna just go ahead and tie the new yarn right on. Now I wanted to point out, there's lots of ways to join a new yarn, uh, a new color or a new yarn ball. Um, I like to just cut the yarn and tie it right on. If you have a way that you prefer to do it, definitely feel free to do that. Okay, so I um, also, you don't necessarily, for grannies, you don't necessarily have to start where you left off. You can tie it into any one of these spaces. And I actually prefer to do that. Um, this is just a personal preference. Because uh, weaving two ends along at the same time uh, might add a little bit extra bulk than you need. So if you just back up a little bit, um, you can weave in one end and then come around and weave the other end, just as a side note. Okay, so we're gonna tie the new yarn on. So insert your hook into any one of these chain one spaces and bring the yarn through. And then just go ahead and just tie it right on. I really love these colors together, they're so festive. Okay, so here's our tail. We're gonna hold it along the edges we work once again, um, saving us lots of time when the blanket is you know, enormous and we have all these ends everywhere. It'll be, it'll be so much easier not to have all that. Okay, so reinsert your hook back into that space, bring up a loop, and then you're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four, okay? Then you're gonna work a double crochet into the same space. So double crochet and then chain one. Then we're gonna, if you need to push things over again, that's okay. Still holding that tail. Then we're going to hop over to this next space and we're gonna work two double crochet. One and two and chain one. I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn here. Okay. Hop over to the next space, and you can drop that tail whenever you want, when you feel it's sufficiently woven in. So the next space, we're working two double crochet and a chain one. Next space, two double crochet, chain one. Next space, two double crochet, Chain one, next space, and we're coming up to our other tail. 
I just wanted to point that out so you know when to weave that in. Two double crochet. Chain one. Next space. Two double crochet, chain one. Just get a little bit more yarn, holding that tail along the edge. Two double crochet, and a chain one. Next space, two double crochet, chain one. Almost to the end, I'm going to drop this tail because I feel like it's been woven in enough. Two double crochet, chain one. Okay, if you need to kind of straighten things out, that's okay too. Almost to the end, two double crochet. Chain one. Last space, two double crochet, chain one. Now we're going to count one, two, three chains up. See them? One, two, three. Insert our hook into that chain. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Okay, so let's cut the yarn because we're going to be moving on to the cream color, the fisherman, for the next round. So go ahead and cut the yarn and fasten off. Just like that. And then I just want to take a moment to flip mine over and trim these ends that we have here. All these ends that we wove as we went along. Not this one, because we're going to weave that one in next, but I like to trim as I go and then everything looks so nice and neat when I'm working. Okay? So round two is complete. So let's start on round three. We're going to work that again uh, in the Fisherman. Okay, so round three is very, very similar to the round we just did, except for we're going to just be doing three double crochets instead of two. Okay, so once again, I like to just see this tail here. I like to just back up a little bit and tie my new yarn on on the other side. So just uh, any of these uh, chain one spaces from the previous round, they created this, this space for us. Bring the new yarn through, just like that. Well, I brought way too much through, so let me just back out a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then just tie it right on. You don't need your tail to be too long because you're just weaving it, weaving it along that edge. So it doesn't need to be super long. Okay, so we're going to hold that along the edge the same way we've been doing before. Okay, so round three. We're going to reach in, bring up a loop. Once again, chain four. One, two, three, and four. Now, in the same space where we're doing this, we're going to work two double crochets this time. So... One and two. I'm still holding that tail along the edge as I make my stitches. Okay? So it's going to look like that. Okay? Now let's get a little bit more yarn. Then we're going to chain one. And we're going to hop over. I still have that uh, tail there. We're going to hop over to the next space. And do this time, because this, this chain at the beginning counted as one of our double crochets, in this space we're going to do three double crochets. Okay, so let's count one, two, and three. Chain one. See how it's it, it makes the uh, allows the circle to grow. Okay, and and also still lay flat. Now you notice that it's still a circle. We haven't transformed it into a hexagon yet. This is the last circle round, and then our next round, I'm going to show you how to transform your circle into a hexagon. I think that part's really fun. Okay, so let's hop over to the next space, and we're going to do <clears throat> three double crochet. One, two, and this is three. Okay, let me just get a little bit more yarn so I don't have to keep doing this. 
these bulky yarn projects with large hooks. Use um, lots of yarn quickly. That's why they're really quick projects. Okay. There we go, all mixed up. Okay, so we did three double crochet, then a chain one. Hop over to the next space. Three double crochet. That's two and three, and then a chain one. Hop over to the next space. Work three double crochet. I love how this red center is totally looking like a um, poinsettia to me. Okay, three double crochet and a chain one. Three double crochet. Now see I'm at the next tail. We're gonna hold that one along the edge as we work for this one as well. I dropped the red one a while back. So we can just trim that when we're done this round. Okay, holding that tail along the edge, hop over to the next space. Three double crochet, one, two, three, and a chain one. Still holding that tail for a little bit longer and work three double crochet, one, two, three, and a chain one. We can probably drop that uh, tail now and I'm just going to straighten some stuff out. It's laying nice and flat. You can kind of check your work that way too, but these granny hexagons always lay nice and flat. Okay, so next space, we're almost done our round. Three double crochet. One, two, three, and a chain one. Getting a little bit more yarn. There we go. Next space, three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one, just a few more spaces left. Next space, three double crochet, one, two, two, and three, chain one, last space, three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one. Now we're back where we started. And we're gonna count three chains up. Same thing we did before, one, two, three, Insert the hook into that chain. We're gonna join with the slip stitch. Bring up the loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And our round is closed. So you can kind of lay it flat. Looks beautiful. I'm totally loving the way it looks. These colors, these holiday colors always make me so happy. They're so festive. Okay, so we're gonna cut our yarn and then we're going to work on our final round of our hexagon. Now I just want to grab my ruler. Remember at the beginning um, in day, the day one video, I mentioned that having a ruler or a tape measure um, was something handy to have. Not required, but something nice to have. I just like to measure as I go. Um, so what we have now is a circle, like I mentioned before. We're going to go back to this red over here and turn it into a hexagon for the next round. But I'm just curious. We have about eight inches. Okay, so we're gonna grab our cranberry and then we're gonna turn our circle into a hexagon like magic. It's really pretty the way it kind of shapes up into a hexagon. Okay, so for round four, um, our tail is over here. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. We're gonna go with any of these chain one spaces from the previous row, okay? Um, actually, before we proceed, let's give this a little trimming just to get these little ends out of the way. You'll have quite a pile of little ends when you're finished. 
just as an FYI. Okay, so grab your next color. I'm going to do the red. And any one of these chain one spaces, tie the new yarn just right into any of those spaces. Okay, you don't need it to be too long because it's just going to get woven in anyway. Okay, so I went ahead and tied this yarn on. Next, let's hold that along the edge as we work. We're going to reach in with our hook and we're ready to go. Okay, moving right along, we're going to reach in and bring up a loop. Okay, so go ahead and chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then in the same space, we're going to work our first corner. So a hexagon is made up of corners and sides. So you're going to have your corner that forms a point at the top, and then you'll have the flat side. And then you'll have another corner and then a flat side. We're going to begin by making a corner. So we did our chain four, and then in the same space, we're going to work two double crochet, one, and two, And then we're going to chain one. And then still in that same space, we're going to work three double crochet. So one, let's get a little bit more yarn. Two, and three. So let's look at what we just did. We have our first corner, and it looks very much like a corner. Okay, so let's hop over to the next space. Go ahead and chain one, find the next space, and then we're gonna work our first side of our hexagon. So our hexagon is gonna be corner, side, corner, side, corner, side, all the way around, okay? So here is our next space. We're gonna work our sides. So we, remember, we did a chain one in between. Then for our sides, it's just three double crochet. So one, two, and three. Okay, side is complete. Go ahead and work a chain one in between. Make sure your, uh, your groupings, all these groups that you're doing, all have a chain one in between. That way you have enough room to work the stitches when you, you know, do the next round. Okay, next space is gonna be a corner again. So for a corner, we're gonna do three double crochet, one, two, whoops, three, chain one, and then three double crochet, all in the same space. So one, two, and three. Let's look at our handiwork. We lay it down on the table here. Okay, we have a corner, a side, and a corner. See that? Starting to take the shape of a hexagon. Let's keep going. Again, we want to chain one in between each one of these groupings that we're creating, and then we're ready to work another side. So three double crochet. One, two, and three. And then go ahead and chain one. Okay, next uh, we're going to work a side again. I mean a corner, excuse me. So three double crochet. One, two, and three. Then chain one and in the same space three more double crochet to create that really pretty hexagon corner. So that was two and then three. Okay, let's look at what we have so far. Looks absolutely stunning. Okay, I really love granny hexagons. Okay, then go ahead and chain one. Now we're ready to work. I, I uh, am going to incorporate, see this, we've come to another tail. Just go ahead and incorporate it into the next space as well. So we just worked a corner. Now we're ready to work a side. I did that chain one. So let's work three double, whoops, 
I dropped everything. <laughs> it happens. Okay, we're working our side. So three double crochet. One, two, and three. I can drop that tail. I, I incorporated that tail in there. Go ahead and chain one. Now we're ready to work a corner. Three double crochet, one, two, and three. Chain one, and then three more double crochet in that same space. So one, two, and three. It is shaping up so nicely, okay? Looks great. So we're about halfway around and you can see how we've gone from this circle to a hexagon. Looks awesome, okay. So, go ahead and chain one. Now we're ready to do another side. So one, two, three double crochets to do our side and then chain one. Hop to the next space and work your next corner. One, two, three, chain one, and then three more double crochets all in that same space. So one, two, and three. Chain one. Let's work another side. If you ever um, forget what you need to do next, just look at where you've been. So if you just did a corner, you know to work a side. Okay, so I did my chain one, and then we're going to work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one. Get a little bit more yarn and then go over to the other side and then we're ready to work a corner. This is our last corner of our round. So one, two, and three. Chain one and then three more double crochet all in that same space. So one, two, and three. Now let's work the very last side. See, we're almost where we began. So go ahead and chain one, and then work your side. Three double, whoops, three double crochet. One, two, and three. chain one, and now we're back where we started. So let's join with a slip stitch to close the round. Count one, two, three chains up, insert your hook into that chain, grab your yarn, bring the yarn, wrap your yarn around hook, bring it through, and now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And we've closed our round. Okay, so we can cut the yarn at this point and go ahead and fasten off and pull tightly to, you know, secure that knot. And then let's flip it over and trim these tails. And our hexagon is totally done. Okay, we have our very first hexagon. Now, what I like to do when I, whenever I make a hexagon is go, see these points that we created? It's in between these two double crochet groupings, these, these two little groups of them. I just like to go in and sharpen all my points. Now if you're using wool, you can um, you know, block these as well if you want to. Um, but what we're gonna do next is, let me grab a tapestry needle. See this tail? I'm gonna go ahead and weave that in with a, ta with a tapestry needle. Now, 
we're going to move on to the next section of our blanket next week on the join as you go construction. But first, we need to make uh, lots more of these motifs. So what I wanted to talk to you about next is, um, now some people like to sew their motifs together. So what you could do is make all of your hexagons for your blanket and then grab a tapestry needle and a piece of yarn and just sew them all together. But what I wanted to do for this project is to, for some of you who may have never done this or lots of you prefer to join as you go, um, we're gonna be joining as you go, uh, doing the, the join as you go. Uh, sometimes you see it uh, as an acronym, J-A-Y-G-O, standing for join as you go. Um, so we're gonna be joining our hexagons that way. Now, when you, when you join hexagons in that way, you only are gonna work the first three rounds. The, the very first hexagon we're making in full. So go ahead and make the first hexagon the same way I did in full, all four rounds. But because we're gonna be joining the rest of them onto this one, we're only gonna work the first three rounds. And then when we're ready to join it onto this one, we're going to work that final round to incorporate it onto the blanket. So this is the very beginning of our blanket and we're gonna be adding hexagons onto it using the join as you go technique. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that in detail um, in our day three video when we explore the join as you go uh, method for connecting all these hexagons. But for right now, go ahead and make one full hexagon and then make the rest of your hexagons for your blanket just the first three rounds. So you'll make a big pile of circles, basically, um, and only one hexagon will have this final round. Okay, so I wanted us to quickly take a peek at the finished blanket because I wanna talk a little bit about the number of motifs that we're gonna need. Um, I mentioned this a little bit in week one. And I also wanna talk about some color options. So here you can see all the granny's uh, hexagons and they're all joined together. So if you wanna make the blanket like I did, you're gonna need a total of 24 motifs. Now, like I mentioned before, you're only gonna need one full hexagon and then you're gonna need several of the um, rounds one, two, and three to make these circles. Now I have a circle somewhere, oh, here it is. So it's gonna look like this. So you're gonna make one full hexagon and then make a bunch of um, these circles. Now you can make, so like I mentioned, 24 motifs. So you'll need one full plus 23 circles total. You don't have to make all 23 by next week. Um, you could even make uh, a hexagon and then one additional circle to learn the join as you go technique. But um, you'll need uh, some circles plus your full hexagon. Now I wanna talk a little bit about colors as well. Now I mixed up my colors. As you can see, some of the hexagons have red centers, some of them have cream color centers, and some of them have green centers. Now no matter what center color I chose, I always um, repeated uh, my color sequence. So what I mean by that is if we slide our blanket over here, you see how this motif here has also a green center. So even though I switched up my color centers, you can see each motif that has a green center, uh, I, did, I repeated the same sequence. And what I mean by that is, so both of these have a green uh, round one, a cream round two, a red round three, and a green uh, round four. So, and if you also notice, whatever my center color is, is also round four. So round one and round four each have the same color. And the reason I'm, I'm saying that is because it kind of allows um, the colors uh, that we've chosen or that you've chosen to be dispersed evenly throughout the blanket and allows you uh, to use up your yarn evenly as well. So you're not left with a whole bunch of green and maybe just a little tiny bit of red, for example. Now, alternatively, if you don't wanna mix up your colors, you can make each and every hexagon in your blanket look the same, but you might have to adjust the colors a little bit. I wanted to mix mine up to use up my yarn in equal amounts. Um, 
Another thing I wanted to mention is the layout. So uh, when we move on to week three, where we're going to be learning the join as you go technique, um, I want to share with you the chart that I created of the hexagon placement prior to week three, so you can kind of take a peek at it before we start. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that chart now, uh, to just to give you an idea of the layout. If you'd like to print the chart, you can go to the FiberFlux blog and I'll provide the link below where you can uh, look at the chart and if you'd like to print it and kind of mark it up and make some notes, uh, that's helpful as well. So when we rejoin for week three, you're going to need a full hexagon completed rounds one, two, three, and four. You'll also need at least a couple of circles and that's rounds one, two, and three, because we're gonna be learning the join as you go technique and starting to connect some of these hexagons. So like I mentioned before, uh, the blanket is 24 motifs total. Now you can go ahead and make your full hexagon, one full hexagon plus 23 circles, or if you wanna go um, at your own pace, just make as many circles as you like but you'll need at least one hexagon and one circle to learn the technique. But if you wanna make a couple circles or all 23 circles, it's totally up to you. Um, and on that note uh, about going at your own pace, definitely um, go at your own pace. These videos and tutorials will be up forever, so you can access them at any time. If you need to go back and kind of refresh in some areas, um, the blog tutorials when I put the written pattern to this hexagon up on the blog and these video tutorials will be up forever so you can access them and uh, relearn some things or go back and look or if you want to make another blanket as well so they'll be up forever. I also wanted to give a special shout out to Lion Brand Yarn for providing all the yarn for this crochet along. So we'll see you back for week three and uh, be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest updates. And also, uh, please join us in the FiberFlux Crochet Along group in Ravelry. We have um, some updates in there. There's people sharing some information. They're sharing what colors they've chosen for their blanket. So that's a really fun place to kind of connect and see what everybody else is doing. And I'll provide the link to that group below as well. So have fun this week. We'll see you back for week three for more holiday crocheting fun. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week.